Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now, of course, this is the five-year anniversary series, and I hope that you're all enjoying it, at least. Anyway, the point is, we're back here in Saranid territory. I'm going to be leveling up my companions, because I haven't done that yet, because I kind of want you all to see what I'm really doing, because if any of you are kind of new to the game, then it would be kind of nice to sort of, you know, show you what the companions that I'm, you know, currently traveling with are going to be speaking into. Anyway, as you can see here, we have a tournament. I am going to be participating in said tournament. Three teams with five fighters each. I can only hope that they don't give me throwing weapons. Oh my, yes, they do. Oh, are you... Are you, are you serious? <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say to that. That is... Oh my, yeah, okay. So, I can assume I'm going to die very, very soon. And I'm not entirely sure what to do right now, because I'm probably going to get killed by that guy. Most likely. Am I? I'm not entirely sure, but what I can try to do is just eliminate one. Yes, there we go. Okay, so we eliminated one. So that means that I should be able to, yeah, I should be able to go through to the next round. I was really lucky there to actually get that to happen. Ooh, we have a lance. Oh, very nice. That is great. That is very, very nice. I actually very much appreciate having a lance, because this is going to mean that we'll be able to deal significant damage if I can actually use it properly. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see if I can actually do this. Or not? Really? Really? Okay, I'm actually kind of surprised by that. Oh, well, never mind. It seems like we've just killed one of their horses, which is perfectly fine. I think that's okay. And uh, maybe I can do some damage there. There we go. Obviously, I was not able to get the couch, you know in time, so do need to adapt a little bit sometimes. I'm really worried about this actually because it seems like most of our units are unable to kill anything. Uh, okay, well I've killed one at the very least. It is only a veteran fighter however, so it's obviously not exactly a champion or anything like that, so we're gonna have to be a little bit careful here. Yep, hired blade. Thank you very much. Barney only has 52 in uh, pole arms, so obviously he's going to be a little bit, you know, bad at using, um, yeah, a little bit bad at using the pole arm, obviously, so do need to bear that in mind, obviously I am not particularly, yeah, there we go, oh yes, there we are, that's that's what we like to see, now, I, I you know, I'm, I'm not particularly bad with pole arms, but I'm not particularly good either, because the AI tends to do some very weird things, and I haven't played native for a very long time, so, I don't know, it really just depends on what you're playing, to be honest, I think, some mods really do change how the AI seems to act because obviously there are a number of obstacles in the way or something along those lines. Now maybe if I can just take this guy out. Yeah, there we go. That's what we like to see. All right. So there we are. That was nice. That was very, very nice. And two teams with eight fighters. Oh, and we have a two-handed sword. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is exactly what we want. Okay, yes... Yeah, kind of. Is it? It's kind of exactly what we want, because obviously we do we do really want to deal significant damage, but obviously a one-handed with would be the best for us, but if we can't deal with a one-handed, then I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna have to make do with a two-handed. I think that's perfectly fine. Alright, let's do some damage. Yeah, nice. 53 damage, and we have the green team appears to be winning. Yes. The green team appears to be winning rather nicely. Oh, oh, that was painful. Did you see that? That guy just ate a lance. Oh, that was not not too good. Well, our, our, literally, our two-handed weapon proficiency is even worse than our pole arms? I had no idea. Oh, well. Two teams with two fighters, really? And they're giving me a sword and a shield for this? They're being very generous. Very generous, in fact. All right. Well, I don't mind that at all. This is going to be very easy because this guy's not going to be able to deal any damage to me with that pole arm. Thank you very much. This guy does have a two-handed sword, so he might be able to do something to us. But I think considering he's kind of slightly focusing on our teammate, we should be able to just eliminate him. Okay, so this is a bit... Oh, okay, so this is the penultimate round. Right. Okay, so two teams with one fighter each. Should we take a look at the participants? Okay, so we could be against an Emir or a champion fighter. The mercenary swordsman I'm not too scared about, but you know how it is. They're going to give me something like throwing weapons, like they just have, and then it's going to be an utter travesty. I mean, look at this. Oh, my, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going to... I'm going to just kill his horse. 
I'm going to try and just kill his horse, and then we should have the advantage. But he does have a shield. Oh no, now he's going to... Oh no, now he's going to shoot me with his throwing weapons, and he's probably going to be better at throwing weapons than I am, isn't he? Or maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, now he's using that. Okay, we're dealing a little bit of damage to him. Okay, if we can run him down with my horse. Yeah, we're, we're dealing some damage. We're dealing some damage. That's what we like to see. Yes. Yes, there we go. Okay, we might be able to do this. We might be able to do this if we just lame it up, basically. Just lame it up because, literally, that's the only way I'm going to win this, I think. There we go. <laughs> oh, my. That was very, very close. And I, I just said... I just said the mercenary swordsman's probably not going to worry me too much, but he did. He did in the end. All right, so, oh, I have a lance. This is going to be pretty easy if we're able to sort of get him into a wall. Can we, can we, hmm. He's going to be pretty difficult because he's going to turn and he's going to try and be, yeah, I'm going to try and trap him if I can. So there you go. I'm going to try and trap him. Oh my, that was not good. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this, everyone. Yeah, this guy's being quite irritating, isn't he? If only he, if only he had something else, you know. And if only I had something else, a lance would be absolutely fine. But as it stands, as you can see here, yeah. I mean, literally, what I could do is try to do this, and then go very, very close to the wall. And then hopefully that's going to, like, stop him. But as you can see, he's kind of reacting to that. So, I don't know. I guess what I'm going to have to do is just charge all the way along here. Hopefully he's going to speed up. And then I'm going to hopefully try and trap him there or something. Uh, this is going to be annoying, isn't it? Okay, yeah, this is going to be very annoying. If I could take him off his horse, that would make so much difference that we'd be able to do quite a bit. Oh, I actually dealt some damage to him. I wasn't even attempting to do that. I was literally just trying to kill his horse, really. But yeah, it seems like he's... Ah, there we go. There we go. That's what we needed. That is what we needed. Or uh, we kind of needed that, yes. We needed him to slow down just enough for us to, you know, actually do something. So, ah, there we go. There we go. Ah, okay. Well, I'm going to cut away because this is going to take... A while, isn't it? Aha, there we go. Okay, I've taken him off his horse. And now I have a bad feeling that he's probably going to kill our horse. Maybe. Yep. And now he's going to kill me. Oh, I am livid right now. Absolutely livid. Because uh, if only, if only, literally, he had just... Slightly, uh, how irritating is that? Literally, I mean, it's a lance, right? It's a lance, so technically that should outrange a one-handed sword. But no, not in this case. Not in this case, obviously. Uh, okay, well, never mind. We have returned, as I say, to the town, and what we're going to be doing is selling our loot. I haven't sold since I, you know, left the you know the nordic territories and we're just going to sell all these things and what we're going to do is i am most likely going to be buying an enterprise in amarad so let's take a walk around the streets see if i can get a weaverian dye works and then hopefully We'll be able to tackle a couple of desert bandits maybe maybe head on over to the rodox or something along those lines fight some mountain bandits and then just maybe maybe raid a village. I'm not entirely sure if we should raid a village, to be honest, because the vassals are going to be pretty swift about, you know, getting there. But who knows? Maybe we'll try it. Maybe we won't. It really depends. But what my main goal here was, was to actually buy some better armor. Because obviously, right now, we're not really playing the part of a Saranid, to be honest. We're, we're more... I went the wrong way here, by the way. Yeah, I went extremely the wrong way but anyway yeah point is we're not really looking like a serenad and i like to get some armor so it would be kind of nice oh track some yeah i'd love to track some desert bandits down because that would give us some pretty decent amount of cash all right so a weavery and die works that will give us 679 dinars for a week that is fantastic okay we're going to take that thank you 
And then I'm going to find some bandits, I guess. And I think we've we've kind of uh, wasted enough time with that tournament. Ugh, that was annoying, wasn't it? That was very, very annoying. I, I'm sure many of you have come across that situation in the past where you have a lance and the enemy is just constantly on you and you just can't get distance to be able to, to couch it properly. And when you do get it, finally, then they just kill your horse and then you're useless. So, ah, uh, how frustrating. Oh, okay. Wow, that was uh, that was very annoying. Oh my. Okay, so yeah, what basically happened was I was walking around, I couldn't find them for quite a while, and then I thought to myself, okay, I'm just going to stand around and see if they, you know, come into my range. And they did come into my range for a very, very small amount of time. There's only four of them. So that makes a huge difference to how fast they are on the world map. And I could not catch them. For the life of me, I could not catch them. But they kept taunting me by running towards me every so often. They just kept turning around, running towards me and then running away. Running towards me and then running away and so on and so forth. And then eventually, they went next to Amorad, which is obviously where the feast was being held, hilariously enough. And a bunch of vassals came out and scared them. Scared them towards us and we absolutely... We actually absolutely took them down. So, really, really happy about that. And we're finally done with this quest. I don't even... Oh, yeah, you don't even want to know how many how many minutes I spent on that. But, yes, anyway, we're going to take these just to sell, of course. We have finally done that quest. And we can now head in uh, to, the, to the streets, right? Yeah, we want to go to the streets. And we want to tell the Guildmaster to shove his quest where the sun don't shine, because that was terrible. Well, as we know, the bandit quest is actually pretty harsh, but what I'm mainly doing right here is just trying to get enough money to be able to sustain our next week's wages, because I think we have a pretty large amount of wages right now. Anyway, there's a bunch of experience for both us and our companions as well. And what we're going to be doing is leveling them up a little bit. So let's have a look here. Ah, oh, very nice. Okay, we're going to go for some strength and some iron flesh there. I want to try and make your mirror into a heavy cavalry unit. And Borcher is, of course, going to level up as well. He's going to be our spotter, pathfinder, etc. So we're going to get tactics and pathfinding on him. And he's obviously going to be, you know, spotting and tracking and then eventually trainer as well. He should be able to do that. And Jeremus is, of course, our surgeon. Who he, he, He's going to be absolutely amazing, in my opinion. I mean, he, he really is. He's he's free. You know, he's a free companion. And he just does so much for your team. So whenever you have an opportunity to find Jeremus and use him, then please do. Because he is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, there we go. All right. So let's level up those. There we go. Yeah, that's fine. Let's put Jeremus at the back. Okay. So we have enough for our next week's wages, which is fantastic. And now we can basically just run around and do whatever we so desire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another point in leadership and charisma. And then we're going to head on from there. Now, I would love to be able to buy some armor. So maybe... Uh, I'd like that, but that's 16,000. That's way too much. So can I get something that looks a little bit more in keeping? I could get that, but that reduces our protection by a pretty significant margin. So I'm not really I'm not really happy about that. And it is 231. So I, I mean, I could just wear that, couldn't I? I could literally just wear that. It would make us look a lot better. But in the long run, it would just be terrible because it's not going to give us anything amazing. So I think what I'm actually going to make the rule is... The rule where I can only wear, you know, certain certain armor, and I'm going to wear neutral armor, so nothing that is affiliated with any faction, so that kind of excuses the fact that I am actually using, oh, that's oh, that's a very nice desert bandit party. Yeah, but anyway, that kind of excuses the fact that I'm using nomad armor, and it also kind of gives me a, little, a couple more options, because I do know that some of the Saranid armor is kind of not very good, so it's it's nice to have a little bit of an option there. Anyway, as you can see, most of the bandits do tend to turn around eventually. Ah, uh, yes, but as you can see, Borcher's pathfinding skill is not enough just yet to sort of give us the edge. They are 0 0.7, 0 0.7 faster, so I guess I'm just going to chase them down for... Very long time. Oh, no, never mind. They seem to be turning around a little bit. Uh, yeah, we might actually... Uh, I should have cut them off, shouldn't I? I should have cut them off. Usually it's... it's a. It, there we go. There we go. That's what we... 
That is not what I like to see. That is what I like to see, though. Yes, run, run for the hills, although they are much faster now because they lost a bunch of units. Uh, okay, should I just go for those instead because they have some manhunters? I guess I will. Yeah, yeah, come on. Are you serious? You absolute imbecile. I am... Ugh. Oh my, I I'm going to kill the Kurgits first. Literally, that that has earned my ire right there. Literally, Belia Noyan taking my desert bandits away from me. Ah, oh, sad. That is very, very sad indeed. Oh, uh, well, never mind. Uh, they have 316 here. I, I think we'd probably be, be able to take that with a couple more high-level units, surely. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But what I do know is that I'm going to be ending this episode off here. Bit of a shorter episode at this time. Yeah, not, not much time today, unfortunately. But hopefully next time we will. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.